Hello, hello, this is Dr. Jason Lee, clinical immunologist and allergist practicing in Toronto, Ontario. This app is designed to teach you about venom anaphylaxis and venom immunotherapy as it pertains to Canada. The references for this are based on Insect Sting Hypersensitivity, a Practice Parameter Update from the Quad AI published in JACI, as well as other consensus statements, product monographs, and my article published in the Canadian Medical Association Journal. Without further ado, let's talk about Hymenoptera venom hypersensitivity. The order Hymenoptera includes the class Insecta. It can be broken down into aphids or vespids. Aphids include honeybees, bumblebees, and killer bees in quotations. Vespids include yellow jackets, wasps, and hornets in North America and Canada. Formicidae can include other insects that have venom. These are less relevant in Canada. Now I'll talk about, first and foremost, the honeybee. Honeybees are associated with the greatest risk and least effective response to venom immunotherapy. Honeybee venom consists of melatonin, phospholipase, A2, and other components. Yellow jackets, yellow hornets, white-faced hornets, and wasps are vespids. These contain phospholipase as well, antigen 5, and hyaluronidase. It's important to note the phospholipase between honeybees and vespids are quite different. The taxonomic relationship of medically important hymenoptera starts with aculeata, which differentiates into Vespidae, Formicidae, and Apidae. The Formicidae are the ants. I won't be really talking about this. The Vespidae are yellow jackets, aerial yellow jackets, yellow and white-faced hornets, and Vespa hornets. The Aphidae are bees, honeybees, bumblebees, and other types of bees. Six North American yellow jackets exist. It's not important clinically which type of yellow jacket is stinging because their venoms are very similar. Yellow jackets are the most prominent, generally ground-dwelling, and very aggressive. Statistically, they're the most likely to sting you. Hornets, the aerial yellow jackets, large nests in trees, are very aggressive near their nest and vibration sensitive. Wasps are honeycomb nests on their eaves in other dark places. They tend to be less aggressive. Honeybees, thankfully, are not aggressive while they're away from the hive, but they will guard their hives. And beware of the Africanized bee, which tend to be more aggressive. It's generally thought that honeybees are the only ones that leave stingers behind. In about 30-50% to 50 of cases, the other stinging insects will also leave their stinger behind. So this is not a good way or reliable way of distinguishing what stung you. The histology of a sting includes within a few minutes you'll develop some edema, within 24 hours, polymorphonucleosides and lymphocytes form pustule. You don't get cellulitis within 24 hours. 72 hours later, you get eosinophils and plasma cells going to the site of sting. The proteins and peptides of biogenic amides of venom are listed here. It is important to know that standardization occurs to phospholipase A2 for honeybees, but hyaluronidase for vespids. Antigen 5 is unique to vespids, whereas melatonin is unique to honeybees. There is major cross-reactivity between or among the different yellow jacket species. Different wasp species and yellow jackets will cross-react. Two major aerial nesting yellow jackets, the hornets, will also cross-react. Yellow jackets and aerial nesting yellow jackets, hornets, cross-react. The only exception to this vespid cross-reactivity is one species called vespid squamosa. There is limited cross-reactivity between polystes, paper wasps, and other vespids as well. These are the yellow jackets and aerial nesting yellow jackets or hornets. There is no cross-reactivity I emphasize between bees and other species.